Let's have a talk. Video games. We know them. We love them. If we look at the statistics, 227 million people in America play video games per week. But we should change that to per day. Because let's be honest here, we're gamers. We don't have jobs. The only job we have is climbing the ranks in competitive, reaching the max levels in MMORPGs, or completing the battle pass in Fortnite so you can get a cool skin that doesn't improve skill whatsoever, but at least you can do the gritty with it. Now, if we check the worldwide statistics that I looked up on Google, there are about 3 billion people who play video games. That's 38% of the population right there. I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, why am I even mentioning statistics? Well, it's because games are very addicting. Like a teen with a masturbation addiction or Tectone with anime girls. Let's fucking go! We have AAA Studios to thank for that. We got Halo, Modern Warfare 2, Mario 64, God of War, the hellscape that is World of Warcraft, and a plethora of other titles that have the AAA seal of approval. There's not really a seal of approval, but another way to tell that it's a big titled game is by checking the price tag, which is usually $60. When someone sees a $60 game, they expect a level of quality, content, and gameplay like no other. And most of the time, they usually deliver. Sometimes. However, I'm not so sure. For years, the spotlight for gaming usually focused on the big companies. It's been like this for so long that people usually relied on these same companies to produce the next big game. Or so many people thought. I realize the spotlight is no longer on these guys and instead they're focusing on indie games. Which is actually a good segue into the video title. Are indie games better than AAA games? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, so I'll be honest with you, I have no idea where I'm going with this. It's, like, this question seems simple enough to answer, and yet I feel like it's complicated enough where you can't just answer with a yes or a no. So, let's just, I mean, we can just start with... Triple <coughs> A Games a high-budget, high-profile game that is typically produced and distributed by large and well-known publishers. A few publishers that might come to your head may vary. Some people who are kids and speedrunners might say Nintendo and Sega. People with a Valorant and League addiction would say Riot Games. The people that hear the words, you die, will start having a PTSD, and you would say from software. And that one guy who still plays sports games would probably say EA Sports. There are a lot of different people who enjoy different types of games, either young or old, smart or stupid, people who hate themselves are people who are genuine sociopaths. Every game has a preference for someone, but sometimes people go a little too far, especially when it comes to games. High expectations, review bombing, Twitter, death threats, doxing, killing animals. Oh, oh, what the fuck is wrong with you people? A great man once said, it is what it is. That great man was Asman Bartholomew Gold. It is what it is. I'm so straight, I could suck a dick and it wouldn't be gay. But in certain situations like these, it's a terrible quote. When any games are announced, there's always going to be someone expecting something out of it, whether it's good or bad, but most of the time they want it to be good. For example, from software. I mean, let's be honest here, they don't miss. When you have high expectations for from software, you already know they're going to deliver. Except for Dark Souls 2. We don't, we don't need to talk about that one. However, you can never satisfy everyone. People will always find something to complain about, and that usually leads to review bombing. Remember Quantum TV? We're gonna start with the good stuff. This man's take on Elden Ring was so phenomenal. A philosopher of his time. But the masses couldn't handle such a wonderful and divine take. So they locked him up in prison. So you're probably wondering what piece of literature had him locked away forever. This was it. Elden Ring too hard. Map too big. And graphics bad. There, the difficulty spikes when you get to certain bosses. You're just, it's so unfair that you'll find yourself spending so many hours losing time away from your life. Most of your time in the open world is spent just like running around kind of aimlessly, if I'm being honest. It's one of those games where like, there, it's so spread out. The map is so big. You're gonna spend a lot of time running around. The graphics are dog shit. The graphics are dog shit. You guys literally sound like, like abuse victims, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything this guy said is just, was just really fucking stupid. 
But you want to know who's worse than Quantum TV? Other game companies. Have you guys ever seen toddlers fight at a playground? That's basically what happens here. You have these big companies like Ubisoft complaining, Horizon Devs complaining, even though it's their own fault for releasing their game a few days before Elden Ring's release, and a few others. You would expect with the release of this giant titled game that people were expecting, these companies would get more competitive and try to one-up something like this. But, no, that's too good to be true. But, you know, maybe I'm being too harsh on them. Maybe they'll change in the future. Never mind, they did it for Baldur's Gate 3. I mean, do I really need to say anything? I mean, it's Twitter. Just think of the most heinous brain rot takes imaginable, and that basically sums up Twitter. Oh, sorry. I mean, X. <sighs> Why the fuck would anyone name it that? Death threats and doxing. Now, there is one game that comes to my mind that experienced something like this, and that is No Man's Sky. Some people know No Man's Sky as this phenomenal open world space game that puts a big emphasis on space travel, but the veterans remember this game as a complete glitchy dumpster fire. There were a lot of high expectations for this game and a lot of people were excited. And when those expectations were met upon its release, people were fucking furious. To the point where death threats and doxings were happening to the people who made the game. Some people even show up to their offices to take photos and knock on the door, even at night and on the weekend. Yeah, they fixed the game in many different ways, but the amount of people seething over the course of a few months while they were trying to fix it was just, it was baffling. Then, last but not least, this. Now, when someone kills animals, that's usually a clear sign that they're becoming a serial killer. When something this serious happens, some may say it's because of abusive parents, severe bullying, or mental problems, and 90% of the time, that's usually the case. However, what I'm about to tell you will make a lot of people mad and make those old people back in the day on the news preaching that video games are evil and bad for children were on to something. The game I'm talking about is Genshin Impact. Truly, divorce leads children to the worst places. Now, I'm not gonna talk about Genshin Impact that much. That's for another video. I'm gonna talk about what led to this. So, apparently, there is this character called The Wanderer, or Scaramouche. Scaramouche. And people absolutely hated him for some reason. Not just any hate, but frothing at the mouth hate. Then Genshin had an event that had this certain character as a cat, because anime. So, what do you think these well-rounded individuals would do when they saw their most hated character as a cat? Well, of course, they would kill their own cats in the real world. So now, you're wondering why anyone would do this. Why would someone murder cats over a video game? I have but one answer for you. That answer? The Genshin Impact community is probably the worst and the most pathetic community around. They are the most pathetic, degenerate people on the planet, and I would know because I am a degenerate. Hell, I live in a I live in a fucking basement, so I know a degenerate when I see one. And the way I see Genshin Impact players from this community, I imagine if there's a scale of like lower class people, the Genshin community is like at the very bottom. All right, I call them trash people because every time they speak, it's just garbage. Every time they speak, it's garbage. And some people might say that, you know, the Genshin community, that's just a small percentage, but in reality, it's not. It is a giant percentage. And the little goodness that's in that community probably went to Honkai Star Rail. It's pathetic. It's disgusting. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what else to say. They are just that pathetic. Now, this doesn't exclusively happen to AAA games. This can also happen to indie games as well. They get high expectations from people and they get review bombed just the same as AAA games. The difference is that they're small. They don't get death threats, doxings, or people killing animals, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. They're not big enough to be detected on the radar, but AAA games are. The reason for that is because of marketing and advertising. <laughs> Go there! 
Now, it's not surprising I'm mentioning marketing and advertising. That is just how most product is sold. While marketing involves the gameplay, interviews, merch, etc., advertising involves things like ads, trailers, social media marketing, and creator marketing. It's originally called influencer marketing, but I refuse to fucking call it that, so it's creator marketing. And all this is related to one goal, to sell their game, to sell their product. Then there's another problem. Indie games are so small. They're small. While both of these guys can use the same marketing tactics, the biggest benefactor is always going to be money. If you look at some of the most popular indie games around, most of them began on Kickstarter. So they couldn't exactly have a trailer at a game event to promote them, and sometimes they can't afford a booth for people to test their game. I mean, yeah, they do have trailers, but it's usually on YouTube and not on these giant events that happen. So no matter what they do, they'll always be outmatched. But I think that's kind of a good thing because for as long as I can remember, big game companies have been on the top for what seems like forever. And when you're at the top, that passion you originally had that made someone want to make video games starts to disappear and gets replaced by laziness, false marketing, greed, and stuff behind the scenes, which I don't think is relatable to uh, games, but hey, it, it could be. Two examples that follow these three are Bethesda and EA Sports. The game that follows the false marketing portion is Fallout 76, and the game that follows the laziness and greed portion is every game EA Sports produced. Fallout 76. I would label it as laziness as well, because when it first launched, it was a fucking disaster and barely functioned, but they did patch some of the stuff out, so laziness is off the table. <laughs> kind of, but I'm keeping false marketing due to merch surrounding this game. More importantly, the West Tech bag and the Nuka Dark Rum. The West Tech bag claimed it was made with the finest leather, but it was actually made with the finest fabric that is used for shower curtains. And the Nuka Dark Rum? Well, the bottle was supposed to be glass, but it was actually a plastic casing. And don't, don't get me started on the clothes, cause what the fuck is this? Then we have EA Sports. Now, don't get me wrong, when the first games from EA Sports, like different genres like football, soccer, when they first came out, yeah, it was original because, I mean, it was a sports game. No one has seen that before, but then it kept getting worse. They kept making more. But hey, at least they updated every game with new visuals. But other than that, are they seriously expecting people to buy their next game when it's just the same thing, the same formula? Especially when they're, oh, I don't know, raising the fucking prices to $70. And this isn't even limited to EA either. Call of Duty does it as well, but I have somewhat of the same opinion for them as well, so I won't go into it. But still, it is baffling how some companies can get away with making a profit off of some of this garbage. Some of these games are just soulless, and you can tell that no passion was put into these games. However, indie games are the exact opposite. Remember a few minutes ago, I said that when it comes to money, indie companies are outmatched and how it's actually a good thing for them? Well, I said that because they might think of the money first and the game later. That's usually why I respect any game so much. They focus on making the best game possible instead of making garbage. Not to mention, it just feels nice to play them when you're not trying to 100% them. And I think the reason for that is their ideas. Also, you know, their passion for making games, but that's also a key thing. To be honest, I try to look for any games that have any similarities or the same idea, and most of the time that's not the case. And even if they do, they try to put their own spin to it. For example, Hollow Knight, great game, until they exposed me to Vore for the first time, that part wasn't so great. But I'm just kidding. I was actually exposed to it when I was 10. When this was released, a lot of people said it felt just like Dark Souls. That's because they used the same formula of Dark Souls and made it into a Metroidvania type game. Another game that did this was blasphemous. The game is very gory despite it being pixely. Though having the same formula, they're all completely different. Different art styles, different world building, different forms of combat, they're all distinguishable. However, most of the time there are usually original ideas. Carrion. Instead of playing as the protagonist, you play as the antagonist. So kill everything. My friend Pedro, uh, I don't know how to explain this one, but you can kill people by ricocheting bullets off of a frying pan. Put everything in slow motion and do this. So that's not even the biggest news about the fact that PogChamps is back, baby. Let it play. Yeah, fuck all that boring shit. How about we play chess the American way? <sighs> 
God, I love America. There are so many different indie games with so many ideas that it would take me years to name thousand of them. And even that probably only covers 0.5% of them. So I'll just end this with a game called Soda Drinker Pro, which I think was made by a sociopath that loves soda. Again, so much is put into these games, and yet not a lot of people know about them, especially streamers. I swear, the amount of times I have heard streamers say, I've played a lot of variety when it comes to games is usually false, especially when it comes to indie games. Most streamers don't play this stuff because of the risk of low viewership. The only streamers that I can think of who are willing to play indie games, regardless of viewership, are Soda Poppin, Germa, and Vinny Vine Sauce. Other than that, there aren't that many. So people should stop complaining about how there are no games to play. You say that to my face, I will slap the shit out of you. Though I am talking a lot of shit to streamers, they also have an important part to play when it comes to marketing games because it shows their viewers the games they play and it increases the chances of another person buying their game. Jerma, for example, played a game called Kenchi. My friend saw this stream and decided to try the game for himself. So I talked to him about it. Sam. I'm here to ask you a few questions, if Hello. you don't mind me taking time out of your day. Uh, I am in the middle of this mission. So. Uh, it'll be fine. Alright, so, tell me, do you play a game called Kenshi? Yes. Do you enjoy playing Kenshi? Yeah. How did you, uh, learn about Kenshi? Like, where did you- Jerma played it on a stream. I see. So, if Jerma didn't play Kenshi, would you even know about that game? Oh, uh, uh, there's another YouTuber I watch that plays it now, but I probably, I probably would not have heard of it if I didn't play it now. Very good. Uh, one more question. You don't really have to answer this, but I feel like you should. Uh, why do you play bad games like Kenshi? Kenshi's not a bad game. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, it's from a different like perspective. I, it's a really old game and I'm like the it's oldest not. one. It's like, I'm the oldest one here. And if I find it old, then... I mean, what yeah, does that you make you? This the video, this is gonna be embarrassing. Another example is when OTK made a game expo, talking about and promoting indie games. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't even know most of these games even existed. That's why I put them on my wish list. If we look at how many games are uploaded on Steam yearly, it is over 11,500 games. And that was just in 2021. And I'm pretty sure it is drastically increased. Some games will be promoted on the front page on Steam, others aren't. Some are good, some are bad. And even if they are bad, it's not as bad as purchasing something like Forspoken or... <laughs> Lord of the Rings Gollum. One cost $70, the other $50, but it might as well be $60. Both were equally bad, but at least one of them was functional. And while you regret spending your money on shit like this, you could have bought games like Risk of Rain 2, Hollow Knight, and Fury, all for $60, which, in my opinion, is just a better deal. If I were to compare the small companies to a landscape, you would find a lush green forest with fresh water, animals just being happy, and the sun is at the angle where it's peeking through the leaves and you can see the ray of sunlight. Pure bliss. Now, if we look at the landscape for AAA companies, it's just apocalyptic. When any idea manifests into a game and succeeds more than usual, companies will fight for the remaining scraps just to get a little bit of that success. Why do you think most games have battle passes now? Because of Fortnite. Why do consoles require us to pay for online services just to play with our friends? Well, because Xbox wanted more money. This is not surprising because this is just how business operates, I think. Well, if that doesn't get through to you, then it's like TikTokers trying to get clout from a trend that they didn't originally start. All right, everyone. The time has come to answer the question. Are indie games better than AAA games? And the answer is a little bit. Oh, brother, this guy still- Now, before you say anything about not having a clear answer like yes or no, you have to understand that it's not that simple. Every company, either big or small, can always make great games. However, money can always cloud a company's judgment. At first, they start out with having that passion of making games and delivering said games to simply make them fun to play or just enjoyable entirely. But now, every game has to have a fucking battle pass, microtransactions, pay to win, putting good content behind a wall, 
football that is equivalent to gambling and so on and so forth. I just wish that companies as a whole wouldn't complain about other game success and just try to one-up it. Or don't try to one-up it, just make a fun game, right? It's that simple. Take a page out of indie games and make something new, or just a new concept, instead of doing these failed methods that everyone fucking despises. I wish I could say they failed, but they still make money from these methods, and that is kind of a problem. But at least, not all companies are like this. Nintendo makes great games, Santa Monica Studios, Insomniac, Devolver Digital, so many cases of giant companies caring about their games. Indie companies also care about their games, and they stay in touch with their communities to see what needs fixing. Or, you know, to add stuff, just in case. I can't simply group every company together and say that they're bad because that would just make me ignorant. But what I can say is that there are indie games that are better than AAA games, and there are AAA games that are better than indie games. Sonic Frontier vs. Risk of Rain 2. Risk of Rain 2 obviously wins. No one likes Sonic games anymore. Hollow Knight vs. Elden Ring. Elden Ring clears Hollow Knight by a long shot. Diablo 4 vs. Pizza Tower. Pizza Tower wins. Italians, gotta love them. Scorn vs. Genshin Impact. Scorn wins because Genshin Impact fucking sucks. The Horizon series vs. the Blasphemous series. Blasphemous wins. This could literally go on forever and there really could never be a clear winner. And you know, I think I'm okay with that. Look, I love video games more than the average person, and I don't know where I would be without them. But seeing most of these guys killing each other from the inside out when they can obviously fix the problem is just sad. I just want game companies to get rid of this concept of making games for a profit and just make it so people can enjoy their games. Now that may sound dumb, but that's just how I see things. But what do you guys think? Because I don't think there can be a real winner here, so I would love to hear your opinions about this. So please leave a comment and also subscribe. But there's one last thing I wanna say. The reason why I was able to upload this video so quickly was because it was already halfway done. So don't expect like weekly uploads. Expect it to, expect like new videos to come out every like two weeks. And if it's like really bad, maybe three weeks. But uh, that's all I really wanted to say. Okay, bye.